Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. Now I've got uh, a candle here. Uh, you'll see it's uh, got the word joy on it and uh, that's a reminder that the angel's message to the shepherds was that there was one to be born who would bring great joy to all people. It was good news brought to the humble shepherds in the field. That's one of the great aspects of that wonderful Christmas story. And I'm going to light the candle in a, a few moments. But first, uh, I've got some exciting news for you. Uh, you probably know that lots of elements of the Christmas story that we take for granted almost are not actually in the Bible as such. For example, it, we're not told that Mary rode on a donkey. There's no mention of a donkey in that in the birth narratives. There's no mention of a, a stable either. And we're not told that there were three wise men. There may have been three. We, we kind of tend to use uh, the number three because there were three gifts given, but there may be more uh, than three. Who knows? But uh, the exciting bit of news is that something that I've just uh, become aware of is that, uh, well, it's often asked, where did the wise men came come from? Whereabouts? And it's uh, been revealed that they actually came from uh, Yorkshire, where I was, where I'm from, where we're living now. Although uh, I'm now living in South Yorkshire, the wise men came from the part of Yorkshire where I'm originally from. Uh, how do we know that? Because it says in the Bible, wise men came from the east riding on camels. Yes, the east riding of Yorkshire. That's surely what it means, isn't it? Uh, actually, not. that's not really, that's a bit of fun. But uh, it'd be quite fun, wouldn't it, to imagine that the wise men came from uh, from Yorkshire. Uh, their, their accent would uh, perhaps be hard for Mary and Joseph to understand. But anyway, there you go. Last uh, Saturday, I was invited uh, to uh, speak, give a, a short message at a an open-air carol service at a place called The Junction. The Methodist Church in Hexlop some years ago bought a redundant pub. I think it was called The Rising Sun, and it, it was turned into... Uh, a place where people can drop in, they can have, uh, if, if they've got any particular difficulties, form filling, all that kind of stuff, uh, they can have help. It's been a great ministry over uh, uh, many years. For quite a, a long time, It was the manager was a chap called John Crawford, who, uh, it so happens, was uh, a postman in uh, the village I grew up in, East Yorkshire, Cainham, uh, when my dad was postmaster there. So it's a small world. Anyway, John retired some years ago and a, a lovely lady called Lynn now is the manager of the junction. It's been affected, of course, by COVID, but she wanted to put on uh, a cow service in the car park, everything uh, socially distanced, and it was really uh, well, well organised. And uh, quite a number of folk turned up. And it, so it was a great occasion. And uh, I shared with them... Uh, a story from our holiday back in in the summer in in uh, Madeira. Because one day we went, uh, my, myself, Sue, my, my sister Jenny and her husband Dave went for a walk along a lavada, which is one of the, uh, the, the Madeira is quite known for lavadas. It's a kind of irrigation channels, water flowing to provide irrigation for fields, etc. So we went on one of these famed Levada walks and we knew that this particular Levada walk was going to take us through a, t a tunnel which has been dug into the hillside. So David found in the place we're staying a one of these wind up, watch, uh, wind up uh, torches. Uh, so we thought well it's going to be dark in that tunnel we better take that just in case we need it. So we got to, uh, on this uh, Levada walk, lovely day it was, sun sunshine in and we followed this Levada until we come to the tunnel. And it's obviously a long tunnel. We could, when we walked into the tunnel, we could just about see uh, some light at the far end of the tunnel. So uh, on the right-hand side of the tunnel was this Levada, the water flowing. Uh, on the left-hand side was the, the, the footpath, the, the, uh, the walk, where we were supposed to walk, but it was quite... Um, quite uh, quite bumpy, quite rocky, so it would be easy to trip. So we have to be very careful. On the left was, was the wall of the, the uh, tunnel, and that was quite rough as well. So it was a bit hairy, 
David had this wind-up torch, but to be honest, it wasn't really very good, and it only gave a little bit of light. So I was up at the front, uh, stumbling along. I had my hand on the wall most of the time, but I had to be careful that didn't damage my hand. And I didn't want to go off to the right, because I might end up in the water. So it was a bit hairy. Anyway, we, we managed to uh, navigate the tunnel. And uh, on, on coming back, it was the reverse journey, of course. And I used that uh, story to link in, and I'll tell you the end of the story in a minute, to link in with the passage at the beginning of John's Gospel, where John tells us about, uh, he talks about the word coming into the world, Jesus. And he says, uh, life itself was in him, and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it so i think it's appropriate that i light the candle at this point jesus is the light of the world he came into the world at a time of darkness and you know, let's face it we live in a really dark time right now don't we and um, particularly in this country with this new strain of of the, of the covid virus it, there's all sorts of issues uh, we desperately need to pray for our nation. It's a dark and a difficult time. And I, I related that to our time in the tunnel, stumbling along in the darkness with just one not very good torch. And, and the, the thing was that when we got back out of the tunnel on the return journey, a thought came to our mind that each one of us had in our pocket our mobile phones. And of course, the mobile phones have a, a, a light on them, don't they, that you can use. So each of us had a light that we could have used. But we forgot about it. We didn't use it. And we relied on a, something that was not really very good. And that reminds us of what John goes on to say in that first chapter of his gospel of Jesus, light of the world. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we had the resource, we had the light in our pockets, but we chose or forgot about it, didn't use it. And today, in this dark times, these times for some of despair, of isolation, of loneliness, we have one who will come and be with us, who will fill us with his peace. Even though we miss desperately our loved ones, we can know the peace and the joy and the presence of the Lord Jesus. When I finished that little talk, uh, we sang a carol, probably one of my favourites, a little town of Bethlehem. And uh, one of the verses says this, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. And so whatever we're facing in our lives, the darkness, the loneliness, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the fear even, we have the opportunity to invite Jesus to fill us with his spirit to be with us, to give us peace, a peace that passes understanding and know the joy of knowing him. So I'm going to say a little prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came into our world, a world that itself was in such a mess, such deep sorrow, so dark, and yet you came as light of the world. And if we open our hearts to you, you bring light into our lives. And we pray that this Christmas time, with all its problems and issues, we might know the joy of your presence, the light of your peace and, and your love. And that light may go forth from us to bless others. We ask it in your holy name. Amen. So thank you for listening. This is probably the last one that I'll be releasing before Christmas Day. So I pray that you might know the joy of the Lord this Christmas and his peace into the new year that lies ahead. God bless you.